Hi, I'm Mark Wybra. And I'm Andy McNabb, and welcome to Electronic Cafe, Volume 3. Let's get started. So obviously we're all still in isolation, so I actually can't be with my good friend Mark again, but we're gonna battle on regardless. Um, I hope you enjoyed the classic show reel for 80s albums that we put together for you in volume two. If you haven't seen it, please go back. Um, and again, just wanna say incredible uh, response. Um, so thank you for all of those that subscribed, keep doing so. Uh, we'll try not to let you down and bring you the very best in the old and the new. Um, and today's no exception. So we're going to focus on a couple of pivotal albums um, that really kind of help fuel the fire alongside the craft work, which we talked about in volume one. Uh, so we're going to look at those two classic albums that really helped change the face of music. And then we'll bring you up to speed some of the really cool hot stuff we're listening to in our hot stuff section. So the first of our two classic albums we're going to focus on, um, the first one is by a band that I have a ton of love for. Um, I just think, pff, I'll give you the greatest band of all time to me. Um, certainly created the best single of all time, which is uh, Love Will Tear Us Apart. So obviously the band I'm talking about is the incredible Joy Division. Um, and you know, over the course of their short-lived existence, they created two albums and some great singles, apparently did some incredibly legendary gigs. And I think they probably became the most successful and exciting underground band of their generation. Um, and they were just about to break America when sadly the lead singer Ian Curtis decided to take his own life. There is a film about it, which is a fantastic film called Control. If you haven't seen it, I thoroughly recommend it. Um, but the principal players in that band were Bernie Sumner, Peter Hook and Stephen Morris. And of course Ian. Um, the other three, after the death of Ian, went on to create another incredible band which we'll focus on in a separate event called New Order, which I'm sure you all know and love. Uh, I certainly do. Um, but, but I just think, you know, it's, it's incredible how young men are with electric guitars and just an amazing taste in literature um, can change the world pretty quickly. And, 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 you know, despite the illness and demons that uh, robbed us of... Uh, an amazing lead singer and visionary lyricist. Um, and you know, the, the, the first album that came out from these guys was um, Unknown Pleasures, um, which I think was released in 79 in June uh, by Factory. I've got a 40th anniversary, lovely red vinyl copy here. Um, and the cover's in neutral, so the original cover was black with all these ways here in, in white, which many people have probably seen on the t-shirt and not one and had no idea what it is. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it was produced uh, in Strawberry Studios uh, by a guy called Martin Hamnett, and he, he worked on some really unconventional um, production techniques to give the band its own quite unique sound, especially on the drums and the guitars. As Andy said, this album was recorded in Strawberry Studios in Stockport. It was recorded in two days and it was mixed over two weekends. So incredibly, this album was recorded and finished in six days. It's amazing to think just six days when bands now spend up to six months or a year in a studio recording an album. For me, when I still hear it, the hairs in the back of my head, uh, head from the back of my neck stand up. Um, and the lyrics are just incredible and the atmosphere that's created by the producer um, for that album yeah just pretty I can't recommend it highly enough um, an absolute must have although often voted one of the greatest albums of all time at the time it wasn't liked by the band they wanted to sound like the Sex Pistols or the Clash which was their live sound at their time however they do concede that Martin Hamlet's production has managed to time proof it and turn it into the great album that it is. I was lucky enough to go to a playback last year with Peter Hook to listen to the 40th anniversary release of Unknown Pleasures. And there was a Q&A afterwards where Peter Hook spoke about the band. And it's funny to hear that the band didn't get on at all with Martin Hamnett. Martin Hamnett hated the band and didn't like speaking to them. In fact, he just treated them like, as Peter Hook said, four arseholes who had accidentally written a classic album. 
Cover artwork was designed by uh, Peter Saville um, using a data plot of signals from a radio pulsar. And it was sadly the only album that was released um, in Ian's lifetime. They didn't release any singles from it. Um, and the album actually didn't chart despite the relative success of the group's um, debut single, Transmission. Um, but since then, it's received critical acclaim as an influential post-punk album and has been named as one of the best albums of all time by publications such as NME, All Music, Select, Spin and now The Electronic Cafe. It's good to see Andy has a very nice copy of Unknown Pleasures but I happen to have a copy signed by Peter Hook. So in terms of classic albums, I don't think anything comes bigger or much better than... Um, Unknown Pleasures by Joy Division. Uh, without doubt for me, one of the most influential albums in my lifetime and will continue to be so. I think it's won a ton of awards. Um, and um, it's an album that's, there's some, so much light and dark that come out of it. So the light being that the, the band went on to become New Order, uh, which again was a separate um, the program in itself, which we will be focused on them because they're just too amazing not to. But then the sadness that the singer and songwriter Ian Curtis passed on the night that they were about to go to America and break America. Um, but um, tons of magazines have said it's arguably the greatest album of all time. It comes straight out of the post-punk era, and I'd say that you know I'd agree with them. Electronic Cafe gives it its official stamp from us as one of the best albums of all time. Henry Rollins, the Black Flag singer and the broadcaster said at the end of time when the dust has settled and they write the book on the greatest albums of all time, Unknown Pleasures by Joy Division will be up there. And in summary, probably one of the greatest bands to create a whole plethora of new music that we talked um, in episode one about how Crawford created all those bands from the 80s. Um, I think Joy Division... Um, obviously the remnants that became New Order, um, which I'm sure had some influence from Craftwork, basically because there's quite a lot of synths in the, the second um, reiteration of the band as they became New Order. But then that span out bands like Interpol, um, the editors, um, and, and more recently, um, oh, and sorry, there's another band in America, a very unoriginal new division, but actually a very good band, uh, just the name so bloody obvious. Um, but yeah, really, really good music's come out from the, the ashes of Joy Division. And I'd also say more recent is a band called Curses. Um, I think they're German, but uh, the, the tons of Ian Curtis type tones to it. And you kind of listen to think, God, if Curtis was alive, was this, would this be the sort of thing he's doing? Um, yeah, very good band of Curses, worth checking out. But yeah, I mean, got a lot to thank Joy Division for. More importantly, just for some of the most iconic, well-written songs that I've ever heard and for me uh, my favourite band of all time It is indeed a classic album nothing sounded like it at the time and nothing really sounds like it today if you haven't heard it before go check it out and also check out the album they released a year later called Closer just before Ian's untimely death If you haven't heard the album I suggest you do it's it's um, the lyrics are incredibly powerful the music's incredibly atmospheric and certainly one that I will love for the rest of my life the Sun Bizarre album was a compilation album released in 1981 it contained 12 tracks from as then unsigned bands that went on to be massive in their own right it contained tracks by Blamange Depeche Mode, Soft Cell, B-Movie, and The The. Um, and I remember seeing the album around a couple of my friends' houses when we were sort of just really into music and just going to clubs. And uh, I, I did have a copy at the time, and then I sold on my vinyl years ago. God, I regret that. Um, but I just remember it being quite distinctive because it introduced some bands that I hadn't heard of. The Some Bizarre album is a compilation put together by Steve O. Pierce, who was head of Some Bizarre Records. At the time, Steve-O was a young man working for Record Mirror and he was compiling their new romantic futurist electronic charts and subsequently he used to get sent lots of demo tapes from unsigned bands wanting to be put into the charts. It was the first release by some Bizarre. You might notice that Bizarre is spelt wrongly. I don't know if that was intentional by Steve-O or not. And it was the first release on the Some Bizarre record label and it's Bizarre LP number one. I did know Depeche Mode before that 
hit the album, but they're on there with a very early song. I think it's their first recording. Um, but Soft Cell, The The, Blamange, uh, I'm trying to think who else was on there that I really, oh, B-Movie. So some really, really cool bands um, off the back of this album. The Some Bizarre label is now defunct. It ran from the early 80s to the mid 2000s, and nobody knows the whereabouts of the madcap maverick Steve-O. But Steve-O managed to launch the careers of many notable bands, namely Soft Cell, The The, Mark and the Mambers, The Grid, Cabaret Voltaire, and he pioneered and was pivotal to the electronic music scene. Some of the sounds are a bit dated on it, I have to be honest, um, but it's it's impact and in, in terms of getting bands out to people that most people would love at that time and still do now is incredible. So yeah, thoroughly recommend uh, you guys checking that out. It's a good album. I don't know why the album was so successful because it was a bit of a curio at the time. All the acts were unsigned and it was a compilation of music that nobody knew. But it was, and everyone seemed to have a copy. You can buy copies on Discogs and it's well worth checking out. And also there's a few playlists on Spotify if you just put in some bizarre album. It's a pivotal album from the 80s. So now to the hot stuff section and talking about all the cool stuff that Marky and I are loving right now that's more current uh, than the legendary stuff we've been talking about a little bit earlier. Um, this particular album of the two I'm going to recommend, uh, the first one, um, I happened to stroll a bomb by complete accident. I was out with a friend of mine pre-lockdown in Bury St Edmunds. Um, saw this record store called Vinyl Hunters. I'm always a sucker for finding a really cool record shop and some great lads in there. So uh, if you happen to be in there when we're all back to normal, please pop in and, and buy some great music. And I just saw this cover of this album and it was the cover that kind of... So this is a by band called Mint Julep. And um, here it is here. Uh, the album is called Stray Fantasies. And uh, it's a husband and wife duo, actually. Um, so Keith Kenneth, who's quite a famous uh, composer, and his wife Holly um, created this really cool album. Um, and, and it's actually sometimes, you know, messages, marketing messages are incredibly powerful. And on the front of this, it says synth pop covered in soft blankets of breathy post cocktails vocals, just breathe it in. So for those who know their stuff, when it says post cocktails, obviously talking about the amazing cocktail twins, which was fronted by Elizabeth Fraser. If you don't know her, you will know Teardrop by Massive Attack. She was the vocalist on that, so it gives you an idea. Um, but this is just a beautiful, great album to play. I've got visions of you know sitting in my um, patio with a cold beer, just having this on in the background. It is just an amazing, amazing album. Um, so I thoroughly uh, recommend uh, Stray Fantasies by Mink Julep. And the second final album for me in terms of hot stuff is by a band called Sink Your Teeth. Um, they're an English kind of post-punk dance uh, infused duo. They were formed I think about five years ago. Um, there's uh, a woman called Maria Uzor and, uh, and um, Gemma Cullingford, um, uh, right, we can produce all their music themselves from their base. I think they're based in Norwich. Um, and they kind of fuse 80s and 90s inspired rare groove electronic dance music um, and with some really good bass lines I noticed their bass lines are really strong and pretty ferocious vocals um, and, and their first album won six uh, music's album of the day um, and this new album two uh, which I think is double covered actually because you can see there there's one of the girls there and we've it's got the first five tracks written on that and then you go to the flip side of the cover which is um looks like a say double cover um with part two and tracks on that um really really cool um just a nice strong electronic sound um i'm not going to make comparisons of anyone because i like the fact that their vocals are quite distinct and some of the material they focus on is, is really good so quite an original band but with a, a familiar feel if you know what i mean but definitely one worth this to brilliant one to go okay, with packed and on if you want it in your car stereo or to get the party up a, a notch or two um really really cool i'd expect to hear some of these tracks playing some of the more sort of um indie so electronic 
dance clubs or nightclubs. Um, definitely has a place to play or part to play in that. Um, so yeah, my, another great album. So Sink Your Teeth and the album's called Two. Um, hope you enjoy those two recommendations of, uh, say, uh, Mint, Mint Julep and uh, Stray Fantasies and then Sink Your Teeth and Two. Uh, enjoy the music, people. What are you recommending? Okay, so my first choice is a band from Vienna called Mitra Mitra. It's an album called Marionettes, which is very early 80s, late 70s, um, sounding electronic synth. Uh, if you think um, early Human League, early Depeche Mode, Ice Machine, Being Boiled kind of sound, this is what they sound like. They've had two albums, one in 2016, this one is 2018. They're a two-piece synth outfit from Vienna and there's not much information about them. I think they're in the middle of recording their third album. Um, it's well worth checking out, it's a good album. Following along the Some Bizarre theme, my second choice is B-Movie, a band that was on the original 1981 compilation album and uh, were signed to the Some Bizarre label. They were destined for greater things and they had a, a few hit singles in the early 80s, Remembrance Day, Marilyn's Dreams, Nowhere Girls. They were destined to go on to big things but they never quite did and they split up. This album, The Age of Illusion, was released in 2012 it was their comeback album and normally normally with the comeback albums you don't really expect too much but this is a great album great songs big sound big hooks big synths well worth checking out they're a uk band from mansfield i believe in in the uk and they also followed this album up in 2016 with another album which is equally as good so it's worth checking out both b movie releases the age of illusion Not only do we bring you classic albums and give you our choices of what we think is hot and what we think you'd be interested in in electronic music, there's also a gentleman called Mr. Rusty Egan who's been around the electronic music scene since the 80s and there really is no better barometer of electronic music than Mr. Rusty Egan. Hey, this is Rusty Egan and I've been asked by the Electronic Cafe to tell you about some of the tracks that i am listening to it is april uh we're on lockdown 2020 got all the time in the world to listen to some music so this week i have to tell you that i'm one of the uh only people to have the new uh tiny magnetic pets album and uh that is very interesting and uh, i'm sure you're gonna love it i don't know when they're gonna release that but i've been listening to that for quite a while now also um empathy test are bringing out a new album the third album the decider the difficult third album and releasing online track by track little listen so go and check that out i'll be doing a live podcast on uh, my twitch which uh i don't know when i decide to do it maybe saturday maybe sunday this week uh but i'll be playing on that uh, Isolation by Boy George, perfect for this week, I think. And also uh, Depth Cruiser, I've been loving them for a while. Somebody called um, Elderbrook and obviously Elmer Orchestra and Ryan Vale. They are doing great. Um, I've also been liking um, Thomas Feiner. Uh, absolutely brilliant he is and there's a new album from Wrangler so stay with the Electronic Cafe and find out and stay tuned to the best music that is available to you right now Wow what an amazing uh, collection of tunes there being recommended by the legend that is Rusty Egan. Rusty thank you mate thank you for being such a big supporter of 
our show for Mark and I. It's brilliant. Um, to all our viewers, please check those tunes out because this guy knows his stuff. Um, if you want some validation on that, then buy the uh, album that he constructed originally with uh, Midyear, etc., with the Visage album, and then check out um, some of his more recent work like Welcome to the Dance Floor and also um, Welcome to the Remix Volume 2 on Bandcamp, which is an amazing album. So, yeah, big thank you, Rusty. Um, that's it for episode three, everyone. Um, again, thanks for subscribing. Please share this if you like it. And uh, Mark and I will see you on episode four of the Electronic Cafe. Stay safe.